there are a couple of things you want to focus on when thinking about what can be 3D printed. And we first like to talk about rapid prototyping. So the simple idea that I don't need a tool, a mold, I don't need a pattern to 3D print something. I can legitimately use the technology to print a component and have it in my hands within hours. And guess what? If I didn't like that part, I can make a design change and print another one. You couldn't do that with other technologies, with other types of manufacturing processes like injection molding, because if you messed up, if you made a wrong design, you would have to alter the tool. There would be more, more involved, more cost, more time, more everything. So when it comes to rapid prototyping, you should immediately doing something in a, in, a, you know, in a day or in a couple hours, this is the technology for you. It all begins with your design. And so uh, if you're trying to replicate, you're trying to reverse engineer a product, you're going to have to um, take a big, large gear that was once on an old piece of equipment, and you're going to have to design it. You're going to have to do-age design it with 3D modeling software, not traditional drafting tables and just create a 2D image. You need an actual 3D model. So you may need to um, reverse engineer it by scanning it or using traditional uh, reverse engineering tools like micrometers and calipers. Uh, and, then, and then actually use the modeling software like SolidWorks or Autodesk or Inventor and actually design your part. You have a 3D shape. You have your coffee mug right in front of you. And you want to 3D print that. We're going to 3D print that in layers. And the slicing software essentially is just going to take that part, it's going to slice it in the individual 2D images layer and stack them layer upon layer. And the instructions is going to be telling the motors of the machine where to go, where to move. It's going to be telling the, the extruder um, how to deposit uh, said material and where to deposit and how fast to deposit. And so it's just that... that list of instructions and then finally you're going to have your part um you're going to have like what like the presentation shows you already use part um, may require some post processing may require some surface finishing we're going to get into the details of some of the technologies of which ones need to be smooth which ones need to be painted which ones are so um perfect that you don't need anything that comes off of it um some of the materials need to be uh, heat treated or or put into an oven or kiln so they can they can bring back some physical properties um, but just in general that's the process get your design get your model if you don't have a model you got to create a model so if you just have a, a widget or a gadget at home and you're like i want to print this well the first step before you can even think about printing is getting that file getting that part and turning it into a solid model if you can do that yourself there are plenty of companies out there that, that offer services like this who are reverse engineer to create those models for you. They may not have 3D printers, but they still can get a model for you. And then the 3D printers themselves, the, uh, the equipment, um, get that 3D printed. And then finally, based on your requirements, does that part that comes off that printer need to be first processed? For rapid prototyping, you may not care. You may get this part off the machine and say, hey, this is perfect. Uh, I just want to, it's for fit and form and not for function. And others may say, no, I actually want to use part in the real world applications. I want that form and function, and I want to look a certain For over a century, Farmers National Bank has stood strong. Through booms and busts, peaks and valleys, we've learned to know the seasons and how to grow in each of them. During challenging times, everyone is reminded of the value of solid relationships in both life and business. Farmers, stand strong.